Last year, I did a video called Do Not Go to College. You can find it right here. Now, I argued that college was a bad investment, and I looked at it from a financial perspective. I said basically that you'd go into so much debt that the degree you'd be getting would not be worth the debt you'd accumulate, that you'd have to carry throughout the rest of your life, and that because of this debt, you would postpone essential decisions in your life insofar as uh, having children and buying your first home and all the rest of it, right? And I got some criticism, some uh, unfair, but other criticisms very fair, specifically the issue of, you know, uh, when, when should you get a degree? I mean, what if I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, right? And so I started thinking about the issue because I, I don't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not disavowing my video. I totally believe it. I, I think that everything I said in that video is absolutely true. But I realized I had to fine tune my thinking. And so this video that I'm about to start is the fine tuning of my thinking. So what's the point of going to college? Uh, why are you doing it? Uh, what's the point of spending a quarter of a million dollars for four years at some liberal arts college to get a BA? What's the point? Well, very simply, you're supposed to learn about the world and about yourself at college. At least that's the platonic ideal. It's, it's the notion that at college, you'll be able to learn the information, the history, this, that, the other, the opinions of all these different people, uh, of everything that has happened before, about different aspects of the world, about the reality around us. All right? And along the way, you're going to be rubbing up, so far as you're concerned, with this knowledge that is being imparted. And therefore, you will learn more about yourself. I mean, like I said, that's the platonic ideal, right? But what is the reality of a college education today? Well, the reality is you're, you're not really learning much. You're not learning much about the world, and you're certainly not learning about yourself at college. Not today, at any rate. Not in the Western democracies. Now, see, college today is a sorting mechanism. A sorting mechanism for the rest of the economy to figure out where you fit in. Uh, let me give you an example. Suppose I'm the head of human resources at Apple Computer. Apple Computer, the largest corporation on the face of the earth. You know, a trillion dollars market cap, right? So, I'm the head of human resources and I get two resumes, both from recent college grads. One of them is from a kid who went to Stanford, who graduated from Stanford, as a matter of fact. And, and he was, you know, in the middle of his class, no biggie, right? A middling grades, um, not bad, not great, you know? And the other is a kid who went to um, Indiana State University, you know? And he was top of his class, you know? And I look at these two resumes of these two young guys, right? And see, there are two jobs available right now. One is as the assistant manager at like the, um, the, the, the cafeteria in one of the buildings on the Apple campus. And the other is this, you know, El Primo job that's sort of like a management trainee program that, you know, you get onto that and it's just like a, like a, like a rocket slide up to uh, upper management at Apple Computer, right? And I have these two resumes. Where am I going to put each of these guys? Where am I going to assign them the work, right? Am I going to give the, the management position to the uh, uh, top of this class at Indiana State University? No, of course not. <laughs> I'd be a fool to do so. No, I'm going to give that primo job to the Stanford grad. And I'm going to give that uh, assistant manager position at the cafeteria at one of the smaller buildings on the Apple campus to the kid who went to Indiana State University. See? Because at the end of the day, that's the purpose of the degree. The prestige of a degree is what matters. N not the grades you got, uh, nothing else matters. The, 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 the degree, what school you went to, signifies to the marketplace where you belong in the economy. You went to an Ivy League school, you went to, uh, and not even all the Ivies, just some of the Ivies. Or you went to one of the top schools like MIT, Chicago, Stanford, right? Uh, you went to one of those schools, well, you're going to have one track. 
you went to uh, a perfectly fine and perfectly respectable state school, well, your life, your prospects, your opportunities are going to be very different. The economy is going to use your degree as its signal, its accreditation. That is what your degree is. It's an accreditation. The Stanford degree means one thing. The Indiana State degree means something very, very different. And that's the way life is. That's why parents keep pushing their kids to go to the good schools, as good as possible. The Ivies, hopefully, but at least, you know, a good upper second tier college, right? Because everybody knows in the wider society that where you went to school, where you graduated from, let me rephrase that, where you graduated from, that's what matters. It doesn't matter what grades you got. It doesn't matter if you were top of the class or bottom of the class. That does not matter. All that matters is that you have the degree from that institution. That's the signal. That's the accreditation. It's like your driver's license. Does anybody ever check to see how many, uh, what was your score on the driver's test? No, they don't care. They just care that you have the license. If, if you scored a, you know, a perfect exam or you barely squeaked by, it does not matter. All that matters is that you have the driver's license. All that matters is that you have a degree. So in a very real sense, colleges, universities, are not there to educate students. Colleges and universities are there to give an accreditation. And fundamentally, they recognize this because most colleges, or let me phrase that, all colleges and universities, four-year colleges and universities in the Western democracies are incredibly easy. The hard part is getting in, but once you're in, I mean, with a minimum amount of work, you're going to graduate. Okay. Now, I know this for a fact, and this has been going on for decades. Back in the 80s, I, <laughs> I graduated from high school in South America, and I was a bum, and I was chasing girls, and so I went to college right after high school, and I got BTFO'd you know, within six months because I wasn't studying. I was a lazy bum, but it was actually hard. Okay, The times that I actually tried to study and do well you know, to salvage something, it was goddamn hard. And then... I went to an Ivy League school, you know, later when I had my head screwed on straight, you know, and I knew more or less what I wanted out of life. I went to an Ivy League school and it was so easy. Yeah, because the hard part is just getting in. See, because the colleges fundamentally and at their core recognize that they are in the business of granting accreditation to the student, not in actually teaching them. They are interested in giving the student a, 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 a good experience but not in challenging them. I mean, really challenging them. I mean, challenging them hard enough that they might flunk out. They're not interested in that. And there's the other issue of affirmative action, of course, because a lot of students at colleges today, because they come from protected groups, protected minorities, they can't be allowed to fail. So no matter how incompetent, they are going to you know, pass the course and get the degree. They're not pushed, and everybody knows that. And so everybody realizes that you can make college experience as hard or easy as you want to. And people have known about this for decades. See, even the professors know about this. See, back in the day when I was in at Dartmouth, that's where I graduated from, uh, there was this uh, class. There were three easy classes, the, the classes that all the jocks took, right? It was they were called um, uh, Rock Stars and Oceans. It was uh, Geology 1, uh, Astronomy 1, and... Uh, marine biology one or something like that. Okay, rock stars and oceans, okay? And there, there was this frat, I think it was AD or maybe Bonesgate, where there was consistently a brother who would be taking the marine biology class, oceans, right? And what happened was that there was this tradition of handing in this paper, like the second paper of the term, and everybody, every brother who was taking the class had to. It was like, you know, required, right? It was like an informal thing. Okay, it is stupid, and this paper, uh, the people who submitted it would consistently get a B plus, okay? And the weird thing was that the stupid paper had like this drawing of a dolphin on the cover, okay? And so this one brother, right, you know, it's his turn, he's taking the class because he's in some sport and, you know, he needs an easy, an easy credit, an easy grade, right? So he, they insist that he has to hand in the paper, 
right? But he's one of these diligent guys. So he decides that, you know, screw it. I'm going to rewrite this paper. I'm not going to get a B plus. You know, I'm worried about my GPA. I'm going to get an A on this paper. Okay. And so he takes the paper and he re rewrites it and he writes it and, and he makes it a really good paper. Right. And the thing is along the way, he's like, what is this dolphin on the cover? This is stupid. And so he removes the dolphin, right? And, and hands in a paper that is basically the same paper, but just rewritten and just better written and just a better paper. And he turns it in expecting that he's going to get an A on the paper instead of the B plus that it traditionally got, right? And um, a few days later pass and he gets the paper back. And instead of the A that he expected or even the B plus that the paper usually got, this time the paper got a C. And the, the, the frat brother, you know, picks up the paper and he's like, what the hell? And he flips through it and there's no comment anywhere on the paper. No, no red mark or anything except on the cover. And on the cover, the professor, a tenured professor, had written the one sentence, the one critique of his paper. And the critique was, where's the dolphin? <laughs> you see, even the professors realize that it is pointless to push the students. It's an accreditation game. They all know it. That's why there are relatively few top of the line professors who want to teach undergraduates because teaching undergraduates for them is a waste of time because they are essentially prohibited from pushing the students. There are very few truly difficult classes at any liberal arts college. And this is interesting because as you go up the ladder insofar as prestige is concerned, the colleges are easier, not harder, easier. The hard part is to get in, but once you're in, you're set and everybody knows it. And so what happens is that since these liberal arts colleges that are, you know, they, they are self-consciously saying that they are teaching students to, you know, to, to become well-rounded, uh, you know, like in my college, it was well-rounded student athletes, right? That was the, the mantra, right? They want to be well-rounded individuals. And so they don't teach, you know, actual professions. They teach, you know, uh, uh, random subjects, liberal arts subjects, you know, history and, and math and whatever, right? They teach these random subjects, but they don't push the students. And so because they don't push the students, the students don't learn to think critically. They don't. They don't learn to think critically, especially at the elite level, at the elite schools, at the, uh, you know, the, the Williams College or Amherst College or the Ivies or, or Chicago or Stanford or whatever or MIT. They don't learn to think critically because they don't need to and that's not their purpose. It's just accreditation. And so because they don't teach the student to think critically, the student, the undergraduate student, is left wide open for progressive indoctrination. Now, I'm singling out progressive indoctrination, you know, SJW, social justice warrior crap, right? But it could have well easily been right-wing indoctrination. It just so happens to be left-wing indoctrination because the colleges, the universities that, that grant these uh, uh, bachelor degrees, right? They left themselves wide open by not pushing the students. By not pushing the students, by not forcing them to think critically, to learn to think critically, this ideology comes to the student and the student just uh, eats it up. The student just complies because something else is going on. You see, who gets into the best colleges? The smartest student? No, 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 not the smartest student. The most compliant student. The student that is willing to jump through every hoop that the college admission process sets up. Uh, you have to, you know, help the homeless. You have to take AP courses. You have to do this. You have to do that. Extracurriculars, sports, whatever. See, it's the compliant students, the ones who are willing to do everything that is set in front of them, jump through every hoop in order to get into a good college. Those are the ones who are going to get into the best schools. And those are the ones who, once they are in the best schools, are not going to question the ideology that they are being indoctrinated with. Those students, the best students who go to the best colleges, are going to accept this indoctrination because they're going to be thinking, I have to go along to get along. I have to internalize this nonsense because that's how I advance. 
And a lot of them don't even realize that it's stock indoctrination because, like I said, they don't have the tools, the critical thinking tools, because they were never taught these critical skills. Because the college has rescinded its responsibility to teach these critical skills. You see the problem? Progressive ideology, SJW nonsense, this kind of ideological garbage. It slips in, especially at the elite level, because here's the, the thing, paradoxically. The most compliant students, the ones who jump through all the hoops, they get into the best schools. The less compliant students, the ones who don't jump through all the hoops, they're the ones who will stop and say, wait, 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 this doesn't make sense. They'll look at SJW ideology and say, wait, wait, this doesn't make sense here, here, and here. How come you're teaching me this bullshit? It's not logical, it's not reasonable. That non-compliant student, he's gonna go to Indiana State. Yeah, he's gonna wind up being the assistant manager at the cafeteria at Apple. He's not going to go to the Ivy League. You see the problem? And, and you see, therefore, why it is that at the upper echelons, the upper management levels of these big time corporations, it's full of SJWs? Yeah, because the guys who are compliant and who are willing to jump through every hoop, they get to the best universities. And once they get into the best universities, all they have to do is just a little bit of work and lap up the indoctrination that they are being fed. And they graduate with a degree. And the human resources guy at Apple looks at the guy from Stanford and says, you're hired. You're hired and we're going to put you on this management track. And you know, five, ten years later, that guy is running a department with 100 people, 200, 1,000 people. And he is a social justice warrior. Sure, absolutely. Because he was indoctrinated in college, in the best college. He went to Stanford. You see what I'm saying? You see how it works? That's how it works. That's how the society is working today. That's why you have SJWs in the corporate sphere. Because right now, uh, in, in terms of finance and the economy, we're going through a very, very weird phase that is too complicated to explain in this video. But basically, it's very cheap money is allowing corporations to, you know, it, it's basically impossible for large corporations to go bankrupt because of all this cheap money sloshing around in the system. The central banks in, in England and Europe and the United States and Japan, they've all decided that they are going to pump out cheap money to keep the economy floating. Now, this means that a corporation, especially a large corporation, doesn't actually have to be competitive to survive because it, just, it can just rely on access to cheap money to finance itself, even finance its losses. Okay, And so these large corporations can indulge themselves in this SJW bullshit because right now there, there, there's no competition. There's no pressure to deliver profits. So that's why, for instance, you know Disney, they just destroyed Star Wars, a $4 billion franchise. They just destroyed it with uh, social justice warrior bullshit, right? That the fans didn't want, nobody wanted, and that's why nobody went to see the stupid movies. But, you know, who's in charge at Lucasfilm? Kathleen Kennedy and her little cabal of Ivy Leaguers, right? And all those Ivy Leaguers, uh, who are they? They're social justice warriors, and they don't even realize that they're indoctrinated. They think that this is rational and normal because, because they've always been compliant. The guy at Lucasfilms, who is the assistant manager of the cafeteria at Lucasfilms, he could have told them why uh, the Star Wars films were going to you know, go tits up. He could have told them. But of course, he got relegated to that little uh, uh, assistant manager position at the cafeteria. He's not uh, making the decisions insofar as Lucasfilm is concerned, right? Right. Now, this is going on with Lucasfilms, but this shit is going on across the corporate uh, world. In the in the Western democracies, this is what's going on. Okay, but anyway, I, I'm I'm like I went I went on a side channel. Let me get back on track. So I've explained to you how colleges and universities, four-year co colleges and universities, have become you know a, a accreditation factories on the one hand, and you know sort of like uh, indoctrination camps. Uh, insofar as uh, progressive ideas and social justice warrior bullshit is concerned, right? And how the problem is worse the higher up you go insofar as the prestige of the universities, right? Okay, so how do you handle this situation? And, and this is my advice. This, this is how I would handle it if I had to go back in time and start all over. 
okay? You see, when you graduate from high school at 18, you're probably not really gonna know what the hell you want to do in, with your life. You're, you're just not gonna know because you're gonna be too young and you've been focused on other shit. You know, having a good time and, and coming out of adolescence and discovering girls and all the rest of it and, and just so many things going on in your life that you really will not have thought about the future. And I think that it's ridiculous for you at 18 to know exactly what you wanna do. When I was 18, I had an idea of what I wanted to be and. <laughs> You know, nothing of the sort happened to me. I went in a completely different direction and I realized retrospectively if I'd gone in the direction that I wanted to go back when I was 18, I would have had a fucking miserable life, okay? So this is what you do. You see, you graduate from high school, you got your little diploma, okay? You turn to mom, you turn to dad, and you say bye-bye, you pick up a backpack and you fucking go. You fucking go out, out into the world. You gotta go out into the world and rub up against it. You know, push the world around a little bit and wait for the world to push back on you, right? You don't go to college. It's a waste of time and, and like I said, if you're supposed to learn about the world and learn about the, yourself in college, well, right now, the university is not going to teach you either one of those things. You have to actually go out into the world. Join the military, uh, if you're gonna join the military, join a tough outfit like the Marine Corps or, or better yet recon Marine, you know, get the shit kicked out of you, really make your, something out of yourself, right? Or else go to a foreign country where you don't speak the language and just try to make it. You see, just go out into the world. Don't go to college because college at this time is just a four year summer camp. You're not going to learn anything. You're going to get indoctrinated. It's not going to help you grow. And here's the key issue. Colleges today, a decent four-year college, private college, is running about a quarter of a million dollars. It's what, uh, something like twenty, thirty thousand dollars uh, a year in tuition, plus room and board and traveling back and forth. That's sixty grand a year times four. That's two hundred forty thousand. If you go five years for an engines degree, that's three hundred thousand dollars. And how are you going to finance that? Loans. And what's going to happen with all those loans? They are going to weigh you down. So. You don't go to a four-year college right after high school. You go out into the world. You go out into the world and get into adventures. You know, get into scraps, you know, you know, sleep out at night at some park. I mean, I'm sure you're gonna do that. I've done that, and if you've led a life, you've done that at least once, okay? Go out into the world, get into trouble, find out about yourself and about the world. Don't go to college because it's not gonna help you, okay? You go out into the world. You find some job, you find a place to live better in a foreign country because you learn the language, you learn to live in a foreign country, you learn about real diversity and not this uh, United Color Colors of Benetton bullshit diversity, which is not real diversity, it's, it's ideological conformity masked by the different racial compositions of the people of this uniform ideology. Okay, so you go out into the world, you live in a foreign country, you learn a new language, you get some shitty job, washing dishes, whatever the fuck, living in some shithole place, and you grow, and you read, and you interact with people, and you find out more about the world. And along that journey, as you turn 19, 20, 21, you're gonna start focusing in on what you want out of life. Because as you push against the world and the world pushes back on you, you're going to start to collapse in on yourself to the hard core of who you are. You're going to start to realize, you know, yeah, I like this and that, but like when, when it's crunch time, what do I really want to do? What do I really want to be? What activity do I want to pursue? You, you see what I'm saying? See, the world is there. To, to push against it because when the world pushes back, you find out who and what you are. You find out the things that are important to you. You find out everything about yourself. It's that pushing against it, that, that friction, that is what teaches you about yourself. And colleges today, universities today, they're so fucking easy. See, and they're designed to be easy for the reasons I explained. And so you're not gonna learn anything about yourself in such an easy environment. On the contrary, it's gonna be like camp. And you're gonna have a great time and singing Kumbaya every night and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, you will not have grown as a man. And that's what you want. You wanna grow as a man. You wanna be somebody who can handle himself in the world. And that's how you do it. You go out and you push. And the world pushes back and you figure out who you are.
So once you've figured out who you are, and once you've decided what you want to do with your life, then you decide how do you achieve that goal. For example, just hypothetical, you went to high school, you got your diploma, you went out into the world, you traveled to a foreign country, learned a foreign language, you did this, that, the other for two, three, maybe even four years, and then you realize, you know something? I want to be a doctor. How do I become a doctor? Well, you got to go to college, right? First college, get a uh, BA or AB or whatever it's called, then go to medical school and then do residency and then some other steps to become a doctor, right? Right. So the first step is going to college. Now, why do you need to go to college? Because you need the degree so that you can get into medical school. And medical school is, is the same as like high school to college. The, the better grades you get in college and the better school you graduate from, the better medical school. And the better medical school means more opportunities as a doctor, right? Right. So you want to graduate graduate from the best college possible and get the, 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 the most prestigious uh, BA degree possible so as to maximize your chances of getting into the best medical school, right? But you see, you don't have to go all four years to a college to graduate from that college with a BA. See, for instance, I know for a fact that at Harvard, uh, you can transfer and just finish up the last two years at Harvard. Harvard is a very expensive college. You know, it's the most prestigious college in the country and one of the more expensive ones. I think, I could be wrong, it's something like 70 grand a year. If you go for four years, $70,000 times four is $280,000. But if you go for just two years, it's just $140,000 now, isn't it? That's a lot cheaper, right? It's $140,000 less, right? Suppose instead of going for the first two years to Harvard, you go to, I don't know, Indiana State. Perfectly respectable school and very cheap, extremely cheap. And by the way, if you're like 21 or 22 by this time and you haven't gone to school, you can move to Indiana and make yourself a resident. So you pay in-state tuition, which is very reasonable. I don't know what it is offhand, but say for the sake of argument that the whole thing going to Indiana State is $10,000 a year, that's a hell of a lot less than $70,000 a year at Harvard, right? Right, and it'll be easier, academically easier. So you go to Indiana State, you ace your courses, and you transfer to Harvard. Of course, that's what you do. Or you transfer to whatever's the best school you can get into. My point, you minimize the cost of university so as to get the best degree, okay? You don't go four years to the expensive school. You go the minimum required to get the degree from that prestigious school. Because remember, the prestigious school, the name on your degree, that matters. It matters for employers. It matters for graduate schools, right? So you want the best name possible on the degree you get when you graduate. But it doesn't mean that you have to go to that college for all four years. It doesn't, okay? So you can go to a cheap school. Nobody's stopping you. Go to a cheap school. Go to a cheap school for one year, two years, maybe even three years. It could be that, hell, you know, you can get into, I don't know, you can get into um, Chicago and only do the last year at, at, at $80,000 a year. But the other three years, you can do it at some cheap school. You, you see what I'm saying here, okay? Try to minimize the expense because you're not there to learn anything. It is just an accreditation. It's just a driver's license, okay? It's, this is the DMV. Think of it like that. When you go to the DMV, what are you focused on? Getting it as quickly as possible, as cheaply as possible. You don't care about anything else. Same thing here, okay? Getting the best degree at the lowest price possible and as quickly as possible, okay? Okay. Now, a final note. When I said don't go to college in the previous video, I meant it. I think it's a complete waste of time. I think that there are actually uh, more imaginative and better ways of getting an education. I mean, I'm talking a hardcore academic education. Personally, I think a really good uh, possibility is what's being called bespoke education, whereby you hire an out of work PhD, and there are tons of them, right? You hire somebody who's really knowledgeable about any given subject and you have them tutor you, you know? You know, an hour or two a week, and, and they'll give you like reading lists and whatnot. And it'll cost you maybe, you know, a hundred, maybe 50 bucks an hour, a hundred bucks an hour. But this um, out of work academic can give you real insight and real training. 
you can learn a lot from such a person at a very reasonable cost. See, I mean, it, it seems to me just going to college to learn, it's stupid because they're not going to teach you. And that's the thing, they're not going to push you. If you're looking to learn about the world and about yourself, college is a complete waste of time. Don't be foolish. Don't spend your time on a fool's errand. You're going to get nowhere. Okay. Focus on the practicality of the college degree. Focus on the fact that it is a degree that will open doors for you insofar as future opportunities. In and of itself, it is a waste of time and money. So your goal is to minimize the waste of time and money that college education is.